We are now on air. Time for a total takeover. It's finally here. Finally. Welcome to a new episode. It's about to go down. Good morning. Peace and blessings is yours truly, Dan Adams, a.k.a. the Soulful Conservative, the DA and the Prosecutor, coming to you with another edition of the Heat Podcast. And it is May. Let me look at the date here. It is May 8th. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, May 8th, 2019. And it just seems like time is just flying. And I mean, literally flying by. Now, as you go about your day this morning, first and foremost, giving honor to God and to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for allowing me to see another day, even though I am not worthy. Second of all, my thoughts and my prayers and condolences go to the family of the Colorado student that was shot yesterday and ended up being killed. And for all of the pundits out there, For all of the presidential candidates like Cory Booker and the rest on the left and the lamestream media who think thoughts and prayers aren't good enough. My thoughts and prayers are not hollow, Cory Booker. My thoughts and prayers are sincere. So, once again, my thoughts, my prayers, and my condolences go out to the family of the student that was killed in Colorado. Now let's move on to Trump derangement syndrome. It is at its peak. And now with the New York Times, which I'm still trying to understand how this is legal. And I guarantee you that Trump and his legal team are talking about it, discussing it, conversing about it, suing the New York Times And finding out how, what vehicle and what mechanism they used to retrieve Trump's tax documents from 1985, I believe, to 1994. Released them. And now everyone thinking, oh my God, he got away with murder. He's a con man, as one punk ass Don Lemon said on the show last night. He said that the country has been conned. Shut up. Just shut up. You drunk ass piece of crap. Okay. I was basically out of pocket all day and all night last night. And I'm just skimming through my emails looking at headlines this morning. And those were some of the things that popped up. And I see that the late night leftist entertainment entrenched in their Trump derangement syndrome had everything and everything I mean I mean you could you could just it is not even entertainment at this point ladies and gentlemen because you got Stephen Colbert Seth Myers now those are the main and and I would say what's the uh the black guy from South Africa his name is escaping me right now But it is not entertainment at this point, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I don't watch late night entertainment when I'm up. I'm watching either sports or I'm watching something on Netflix or Prime or Hulu or DVR stuff. There was a time when I would love to stay up and watch Leno and the folk like that who didn't have this derangement syndrome of a president. And it's even... When they bring on their guests and they try to bring their guests into their hysteria. Just throw away the monologues. All their monologues is about Trump. But when they bring their guests on, they try to somehow latch on and continue the Trump derangement syndrome through their guests interview. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am not the type of person. I'm going to I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this. I, I. I'm going to say this the best way I can without cursing or or offending anyone. But when you got leftist liberal numbnut moonbats, every single day, 95 plus percent 
of their coverage, especially the leftist numbnut lamestream media. 95 plus percent of their coverage is negative towards Trump. What is an individual who could be on the fence in regards to who they're going to vote for for the presidency in 2020? You got about 25 Democrat presidential candidates out and about right now. <clears throat> Excuse me, make an outlandish statements and claims. No one from the left or the mainstream media fact checks any of these folk. That is, let them get away with their nonsense and their buffoonery. <clears throat> Excuse me. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, yours truly does not have any water in the political heat remote studios. So you have to bear with me. But none of these individuals get fact checked by anyone from the left or the lamestream media, as I just stated. It's almost. That's not almost. These individuals on the left get an infinite pass. No matter how out of bounds, no matter how dumb and ignorant <coughs> someone may look on the left, they will give them cover and they will somehow not even cover. <laughs> they will give them cover and not even cover the statements that have been made that are complete and utter nonsense, sometimes complete and utter lies. <clears throat> and you have an individual like me who does his best to try and combat, clap back, and point out this ignorance, this nonsense, and buffoonery. Among many others that are out there. It's not just me. What I am trying to say in regards to the Trump derangement syndrome on 10, the meters, the, the peck, you know how you get the meter when you see, and there's 10, it's past that. The needle is probably broken at this point in regards to the amount of Trump derangement syndrome that is consuming the left and the lamestream media. And with the release of these tax documents, which once again, as I stated at the beginning, don't know how New York Times got these tax documents. They're supposed to be sealed, private. Prying eyes are not supposed to see these documents, ladies and gentlemen, no matter who you are. But yet they got their hands on them. So let me know which, let me know, and let's, let's find out which IRS employee or employees, because more than likely someone within that IRS hates Trump. New York, the New York Times and whoever, reporter or reporters, did everything within their, I guess, <laughs> power or powers to obtain these documents. Now, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know IRS law, if you want to call it, or tax law or tax return or tax document law. But it seems to me that this is an illegal act. That somehow, some way, releasing these documents have to be illegal. Because I know damn sure that if someone released the tax returns and documents of the New York Times, its editor, its reporters, its writers, and everyone else, they will be screaming bloody friggin murder <clears throat> so let's take a step back like buckshot from black moon <clears throat> and let me try to get through the rest of what I needed to get through without having a coffee fit like Hillary Rodham Clinton <clears throat> damn so that's about nine minutes in Alright. <clears throat> Seeing that it's going to be impossible for me to f c continue and finish what I want to say without having a coughing fit like Hillary Rodham Clinton. Let me end this with this. And I apologize profusely 
because there were more things that I want to speak on. But you know what? Let me try. Let me go ahead and give it a good old college try and try and get through this. I wanted to talk about this hysteria with William Barr, the attorney general. And I've been going at it with leftists on Twitter in regards to this supposed lie that he told and that he should be held in contempt. And we are in a constitutional crisis. Hashtag Lord have mercy. If I hear another leftist or the lamestream media come out and say that we are in a constitutional crisis because of their belief that William Barr lied, I might, I might, I might do something I really don't want to do. I mean, seriously. And even with one of the individuals on Twitter where I've been going back and forth with, I said, even, I mean, even if he lied, did it change the outcome of the Mueller report? No. But the person's like, well, they need to be held accountable for their lie. Okay. And I said, and, and threw it back at him, okay, were you just as out of your mind mad when you're, you're and I, I, he, he keeps saying that, and this individual, I don't know if it's a he or a she, this individual is saying, and I keep calling them leftists, because they are, because you wouldn't be this upset over a supposed lie that I don't believe a lie occurred in regards to William Barr and Mueller and a phone call and his summary and whatever the hell else. But you mean to tell me, ladies and gentlemen, and this leftist that I've been going back and forth with, that this is a constitutional crisis because of a, of, of a belief on your side of a lie that you have no proof and they keep they keep pointing to oh he said this but then he said this and I'm looking at both sides of the coin and the statements that they're throwing at me and I'm thinking so how is that a lie that's number one number two I threw back at this individual and individuals who are clapping back at me <coughs> let's, let's talk about the whole fast and furious attorney general under Barack Hussein Obama, Eric Holder being held in contempt for refusing and this was a bipartisan bipartisan contempt not just, just the Republicans but 17 Democrats 17 plus I believe jumped on board and held one Eric Holder Attorney General under Barack Hussein Obama held in contempt of Congress for refusing, refusing, ladies and gentlemen, and with his homeboy, as you say, his boy, Barack Hussein Obama, exerted executive privilege to allow Eric Holder to not publish, bring forth, and release Fast and Furious documents. And to this day, I'm thinking to myself, if you did nothing wrong, why weren't these documents released? Now, they are trying to make it out once again with the hysteria on the left. Trump derangement syndrome and everything that you can think of. William Barr is Trump's boy. William Barr is doing whatever he can because he's under the thumb of Trump and Trump controls him and he's a puppet of Trump. Child, please. Let's end the nonsense right here. Let's end, let's end the stupidity. Let's end the fluidity of ignorance coming from the left and the lamestream media. I wish there was a button that I could push. And let me state this. And I state, I state this all of the time. I know that I am not the smartest person on the planet. I know that my thoughts and my opinions and my convictions are in complete... <laughs> an utter opposition to the left and the lamestream media. But if I am proven wrong, if I do something wrong, if I say something and I find out that it was wrong, I will cop to it immediately. I will apologize profusely for it. I will be sorry for my actions, but it never happens for those on the left. Never even when they know they're in the wrong. They will never, and even if they do apologize, it's a half-hearted ass apology, and they don't really mean it. Because what they thought and what they said they felt was true, they still think is true. 
So I don't know what needs to be said, what needs to be done to temper this utter this nonsense and hysteria from the left and the mainstream media in regards to William Barr lying and constitutional crisis. I don't know what needs to be said or done. I don't. Because even they know it is not a constitutional crisis. Shut the F up. Now, got one more topic. Hopefully I can get through. And it seems like my voice has, you know, battled back, ladies and gentlemen. So I appreciate the efforts on my part (laughs) to try and make this completion happen for this podcast. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to see, and as we go forward, and as the leftists, pundits, and the mainstream media are trying to make it seem as if we are going, we are going to be headed towards an economic collapse because of China and in the in the trade war that and trade deal that Trump is trying to implement. I look at it like this: the economy is roaring along, even in the midst of this trade war. It is roaring along. Unemployment is at its lowest in history. Now, you mean to tell me that for the past, I don't know how many years, China has been kicking our ass. So, we're going to let the status quo continue? We're going to continue to let China kick our ass in regards to trade? This is what the left and the mainstream media will kowtow to, will cower to, just because President Trump is the one clapping back at China and saying, hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. this is not how we're going to operate while I'm president. Because I guarantee you, if President Barack Hussein Obama had the balls to do what Trump is doing right now, they would be... There would be balloons, streamers, confetti, and everything else laid at that man's feet by the left and mainstream media. That's what you get, and that's how. And, they, and he, it's. And I'm about to end this podcast with this: the left and the mainstream media seem to think they're not leftists or liberals. They will scream to the mountaintops from the mountaintops within out and around and whatever way means possible they will scream that they are not leftists that their coverage isn't leftist leaning and that for today ladies and gentlemen is the joke of the day (laughs) so as you go about your day may god continue to bless you and yours may he keep you and your family safe until next time god bless Peace. People keep asking if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. If I said it, I'm lifting quite my tongue for no one, for no 